talking about everything going on there at the PlayStation event. So again, you can check all that out at digitaltrends.com. Let's continue on here with the show. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, coming up next, though, we're going to talk about 911, our 911 systems. Uh, they need an overhaul, and we're going to talk about why that is. Joining us right now, we've got Amir Elhai, who's the founder and CEO of Carbine 911. Amir, thank you very much for joining us. And I think uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about here with this is just when we talk about the 911 systems, can, can you kind of walk us through why they need to be revamped and what some of the issues are that they're encountering right now? Sure, so thanks for having me. I don't know when was your last time that you called 911, but obviously this is a totally a disaster experience. Um, let's start from the basic. When you're calling to 911 in these days, they don't know where you are, okay? Uh, you have to know where you are in order to know how to dispatch the forces to your exact location not talking about the fact that in these days, everything is uh, based over a voice. So there is the call takers and the dispatchers have no un understanding of what is happening in the event that they need to use their gut feeling in order to understand what kind of event you're experiencing and not talking about false alarms, etc. So in these days, basically 911 calls are, are purely based on voice only, while Carbine is here to basically change this shift and to bring rich data into the field and help call takers, dispatchers, and obviously the callers to get better services. Um, when you talk about that, and it, you're right, that's a very good comparison, just thinking about how this all works and everything's voiced and you have to say where you are. So that definitely would be something that needs updated. And with Carbine 911, how is it that you go about that, providing that kind of information for the caller to um, the emergency system? So we are partner, partnering directly with, uh, with uh, the system uh, operators. And once someone is dialing 911, we have the ability to get the location immediately and to share it with the emergency service. So location is a key because then the, the, the agencies know how to help you. This is one. Second, once the calls come into the command and control, basically what is happening is that we are sending a link to the person and then by clicking on this link, he is approving sharing information with the agency. So I'm talking about real-time video, real-time imagery, real-time chat, medical information, and additional information that is critical uh, for the agencies in order to give you the, the ultimate uh, response in real-time. Um, so this would be something that for the, the person calling, they wouldn't need to actually download anything ahead of time, this would be a link that's just sent directly to them and then they interact with 911 in that way. Absolutely. The user from his experience, he don't have to download anything, just dialing 911 as you know, all of us are used to. I mean, this seems like a great idea, uh, obviously, of, of something that does need to be updated. So I guess um, in, this, in this instance, how many times has it been used so far or where is it being implemented? And maybe do you have an example that you could share with us? Sure. So we have, first of all, we are serving now more than 400 million people worldwide. We have around 1 million uh, calls processed through our platform per day. Uh, we are working uh, from seven offices, but we uh, heavily invested in the US, Mexico, Brazil, India, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Middle East and other places around the world. Uh, in the U.S., as an example, we are working with Stanford, Connecticut. I don't know if you had a chance to see the, the latest uh, uh, event that we've been reported, but uh, there was a kayaker that was uh, injured. He was, uh, she was stuck in the in the middle of the river somewhere. She didn't know where she is. She called 911 and she said that she's drawing into the water using carbon technology. They pinpoint her location. They use the video to understand exactly where they should come from, from the east side, from the west side of the river. And basically like five minutes after they came exactly to the point and saved their lives. And the mayor of Stanford did an amazing video with us. And it's, we are literally in the business of saving lives and we are very proud of uh, being part of it. That's incredible. Well, what's, what's next then on the horizon? I mean, you've got 400, pe 400 million uh, people, like you said, worldwide, but here in the US, what are the next steps that you need to take to try to implement this further? So we are working with part uh, we are working with uh, our own people on ground to work with the states and the counties in order to implement that technology. Uh, besides that, we are seeing a great future coming. Uh, and I think that uh, we're going to see more and more connected devices coming into the 911 domain. So sensors and IoT devices will be able to call the police before human did it. And this is the future of, of emergency services. 
Um, and you know, the, the COVID and, and all what is going currently happening, uh, catch the government's not prepared enough for, uh, for, for the things and call volumes are going up and we are trying to be efficient and help those government to, uh, achieve their, uh, roles and, uh, just execution and and work with our partners to make it work. I guess one other question too, just now that you're bringing all of this up and thinking about future technologies as far as how much it could help. Um, when you look at artificial intelligence, what are some different ways that you see that uh, being able to help affect this and maybe streamline this 911 process? Um, Yes, I think that artificial intelligence is uh, obviously going to influence anything that we are doing in our life. Uh, I think that is specifically in public safety, it will take a bit more time because uh, this specific market is not an early adopter and you, they prefer you know, other industries to, to, uh, to try it first before it's coming and, and actually influencing people's lives. But for sure, uh, once we have the ability to, as an example, to use uh, natural language processing and to know exactly what people are talking when they're calling to 911, without the call taker need to do any kind of active uh, uh, actions on the, in the system, we will be able to identify keywords and according to those keywords to use a smart AI platform to alert uh, the responders, the closest responders in the field, etc. So uh, I, I do see AI coming and influencing the public safety, but it will take a bit more time. Wow. Well, it's fascinating what you're doing and definitely going to be something, you know, to help people. And like you said, to save lives. And that's that's what it comes down to. And Amir, I want to say thank you very much for joining us here today to talk about this, to talk about Carbine 911 and some of the work that you're doing. Uh, congratulations on the success. It's helping people out. And, uh, and we love talking about that. Thanks for being here on Digital Trends Live. Thank you very much. Bye bye by uh, Amir Elahai 